Welcome to part two of the uh, June 8, 2019 update. So I'm going to show you guys some really good stuff that I got uh, t today. The these everything you're about to see here came from a really cool, uh, I guess, uh, collectible slash antique uh, uh, big uh, thrift store place here in uh, here in Auburn. Uh, it used to be kind of just kind of a a junk. Uh, thrift store just a bunch of uh, stuff but now it's become but now over like the last couple of years it's become a really nice like collectible uh, antique co slash uh, collectible like place with a bunch of really nice uh, stu uh, stuff basically and uh, they had some really good VHS tapes that I wanted at a uh, and they were uh, six for five dollars so I grabbed uh, eighteen dollars worth of stuff here so let's get started shall we all right first up before i show you the vhs tapes i also got two really cool uh books from that uh place i got this one called the great movies in cinema history 60 films deserve to be called the great movies very cool uh, this is actually from uh 1973 so it's a bit obviously it's a bit uh, dated but still still a really cool book so yeah I thought that one was cool so I wanted to get that and also I got this uh, the complete book of Oscar fashion Variety, 75 Years of Glamour on the Red Carpet. Very cool. Uh, this is from, uh... This is a newer book. This is from 2003. Very cool. Um, I was flipping through this uh, book, and... It's got, like, all sorts of really cool, like, pictures and, uh... All sorts of, uh... Just all, just all kinds of really cool stuff, stuff in it. Like it mentions a bunch of like fashion that was used in uh, movies, and uh, and it goes through like several uh, decades. See, so, yeah, I thought this, I thought this book looked really cool, so I figured I'd pick it up. Thought it'd be something nice to uh, look through, and uh, it's got this really nice like sort of leather uh, velvet. Uh, covering like so yeah all right see so, yeah, I have to look at those so, yeah those two books look pretty cool so I have to look at them so now onto the VHS tapes that I got and I got some and I got some really cool ones that you guys are about to see all right so here we go. Yep, this is the video film classics print of The Birth of a Nation. This is this is the 94 minute cut of the uh, film. So yeah, this is the uh, this is now my third uh, copy of this film and uh, yes yeah, is I believe enough this is a different uh, cut of the film that I don't uh, ha uh, have yet see so, yeah, again this is the 94 minute cut so this is a, a three hour movie that's been a uh, cut in half so yeah I still have to get the um, the really cool uh, Kino like two tape collector's edition set that has the three-hour cut plus the uh, like twenty-minute behind-the-scenes featurette. If I could find a copy of that, that'd be uh, pretty awesome. Record on a Scotch tape.
So, yep. My first any Griffith Show Collector's Edition tape that I have. This one is Mayberry is for Lovers. This has four episodes. This has The Perfect Female, which originally aired November 27th, 1961. A Wife for Andy, which originally aired April 15th, 1963. Man in the Middle, which originally aired November 2nd, 1964. And Eat Your Heart Out, which originally aired February 28th, 1966. And... Originally released in 1999, but this is a 2001 re-release. Print date is April 29th, 2002. Yep, this is a Kodak video program's release. This is a, this is yes, this is a uh, video tours uh, release, co-produced by uh, yeah, it's a video tours release distributed by Kodak Video Programs. 19.9 tape, 30 minutes. Of course, record on, a, record on a Kodak tape. Oversized reels. And no print, no, uh, no print down here. This is a 1989 uh, release uh, by CMV Enterprises. This is from the Masters of American Music series. This is a much later reprint. Print in the print on the 88th day of 1995. So yeah, this is a uh, a much later pressing. Duplicating LP mode. No print date.
Now this next one was not part of the uh, six for the uh, six for five uh, deal. It was with an, it was in another uh, section of VHS tapes in a different part in a different part of the store. But I got this one for one dollar. So yeah, but yeah. This one was this was the only VHS VHS tape I got from that store that was not part of the uh, six for five. As you can tell, this is an original copy that's recorded in SP mode as opposed to uh, LP mode. Yeah, the late the later copies of this tape were recorded in LP mode, but this is an original SP mode copy. Hopefully, I can find the LP mode copy of this tape sometime because that'd be pretty cool. March twenty second, nineteen ninety four. I believe this is my first Monterey home videotape that I have. Uh, doesn't say what year this movie is from. Well, it does, but it's in Roman numerals. Here. Maybe you guys can tell me what year that Roman numeral stands for. Uh, let me know in the comments. Because I'm, because I have no idea. But this is a 1991 VHS tape. Print dates are January 22nd and February 3rd, 1994. Another Crown Movie Classics tape for my uh, collection. This is a 1961 Japanese film. And this has English subtitles. And this tape's kind of a pain in the neck to get out of the case. There we go. See, it says Japanese 1961. Yep, another Sherlock Holmes key videotape for my uh, collection. Uh, 
uh, uh, this is a 1944 film, renewed in 1971. And, yep, this is a 1988 tape. Nineteen ninety reprint. Forty fourth week of nineteen ninety three. <laughs> and there's the burka right there. So yeah, this one will this one will most definitely have a uh, white screen depth at the end. Same same thing with um, the one I showed you in part one, uh, ta Table for Five. That one will also most likely uh, have a white screen at death at the end. The next two are both RC Clean Pictures Home videotapes. <laughs> this is a 1959 film, and this is based on a play by Tennessee Williams who also wrote uh, A Streetcar Named Desire. Nineteen E four VHS <laughs> by bet by think by bet this copy is a uh, later reprint. Oh yeah, this is definitely a uh, a later reprint because the label says 1986 on it. See right there, and there's the end label. Yep, print date is January 19th, 1989, and. Looks like they looks like they goofed up the week and year code on this tape. It says eight six zero on there. Which would mean the sixth which would mean like the sixtieth week of nineteen eighty eight. But uh I think there's only fifty something weeks in a year, so it couldn't be printed in the sixtieth week of nineteen eighty eight. Since it since it has a uh Print date of June since the print date is June nineteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Uh, I think the week in year code is supposed to be the um, let me think. Either the uh, third or fourth, I believe the fourth week of nineteen eighty nine is what the week in year code is supposed to be on this tape. But they goofed up and put eight sixty for the sixtieth week of nineteen eighty eight. So that's interesting. See, so yeah, this has a uh, print date and a. Incorrect uh, week and year code. Very, very interesting. I, I did not notice that till just now. But since there's a print right here, we all know what it will have at the end. And the other one I got, the other RC Clone Features on View tape I got is this. I gotta say, this is a 1965 film, and this is a 1985 VHS, but I think this might also be a later reprint. Yeah, I'm thinking this might this might also be a later pressing. Hang on. Hang on, guys.
times these slide open cases can be a bit of a pain. Well, label does say 1985 on there. And, yep, in the end label. And, but it has a print date of November 4th, 1988. And this time, this one has the correct week in your code. The 47th week of 1988. So, yeah, this is, so, yeah, originally 19, so, yeah, uh, suddenly last summer is a, uh, Originally a 1984 VHS, but it's a 1986 reprint, although it's printed in 1989. And this is originally a 1985 VHS, even but but a 1988 uh, re reprint. So yep. And once again, because uh, since it has a uh, print date in a, a uh, print date right here, we all know what it will have at the end. Oh. And the, as you, as you can see, the label, the label just came right off all of a sudden, so, you know what, I'm going to fix it right now. Alright, put my camera out of the way. Alright, I'm going to fix the sticker label on here since it just decided to fall off just right now all of a sudden for no for no reason whatsoever and the end label starting to peel as well so I'm going to uh Fix, fix that as well, or at least try to. F Whoop! Ah! Wow! Both, so both of the labels on this tape, uh, just came, just came right off. Just that, just that, just, just like that. That's fun. Alright. Hang on, guys. And um, almost, almost there, folks. Almost got it. All right. Just one last piece of tape should do it. There we go. Alright. Sorry about the delay, folks. There you go. So yeah, both the uh, label and the end label uh, fell off, so I taped them back on. On, ca on camera. Well, so well, sort of on camera. Alright. So the lab so both so the uh, labels on this tape did come did just come off, but they have now been fixed. Okay. All right. Oh, excuse me. All right. The next two tapes I got are both Jack Lemon movies.
This is a Warner Brothers Cheesy Shield tape, part of the adult drama uh, genre. Yep. Uh, this is a 1962 film, and this tape is from 1990. It's got WHV right there. And... I can kind of see what looks to be a print underneath the N label. Let's see. Let me see if I can peel back the N label, part of the N label to possibly reveal a print date. All right, there were uh, there were two print dates on this tape, but as you can see, the uh, the first print date, which was in that dark red text, was unfortunately uh, ruined by the uh, end label. But the print date that I can show you guys reads February thirteenth, nineteen ninety. So yep. And the other Jack Lemon movie I got is this is a Paramount release. This is a 1972 film, so this film was, so this film and uh, the other Jack Lemmon movie I got, which is Days of Wine and Roses, are both, uh, so yeah, these two films are both uh, ten years apart. 1962, 1972. So yeah, these movies are just about ten years apart. Maybe just a little over or under, depending on like, what month both these movies were released in. But that's very interesting that both of these Jack Lemmon movies I got are two, are ten years apart from each other. And this movie, and this movie is rated R. And this is a 1983 Paramount VHS. Although the label says 1994 on it. As you can see, and believe, and this is actually a recycled tape. It's got a print date right here that reads August 12th, 1989. And on the top, there's two week and year codes. The original week and year code was the 35th week of 1989, and the but the the new print the new week and year code is the 25th week of 1994. And if you look, both week and year codes say PAR on them for uh, Paramount. as you can see. So this was obvious, so obviously this tape was recycled from an older Paramount VHS. So yeah, and there's the barcode on this tape. I don't know if that was the original barcode from whatever the tape this was recycled from, or that's a new barcode. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to see if this tape has anything at the end.
This next one's a 20th Century Fox Studio Classics tape. Nineteen. This is a nineteen fifty nine film. So this film was released the same year as uh, uh, su suddenly last summer, which I which I showed you. Nineteen fifty nine film renewed in nineteen eighty seven, and this is a nineteen ninety five VHS. And this tape includes the original theatrical trailer. Uh, 35th week of 1995, and good barcode. Alright. This is an MCA home videotape. The film's from 1962, and this is a 1985 MCA home video VHS. Although the label says 1983 on it. Record on a Maxell tape, and if you look, there does appear to be a uh, print underneath the uh, end label. I don't know if I'm gonna peel off the end label to 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 just to, to reveal it because it's on a blue sticker, and since it says this end label, there's like a there's probably a good there's probably like a ninety percent chance that the uh, print will end up getting ruined if I try to reveal it. So I'm just gonna keep this tape the way it is. It's we yeah, it's, yeah, this is weird. Uh, the back of the case is 1985, but the label says 1983, but on the end label it says 1984. That's we that's weird. I'm gonna assume this is originally 1983 VHS, but a night but a 1984 reprint, but repackaged in a 1985 uh, box. So yeah, I'm assuming it probably is a like E four E five pressing. It says it's got the uh, the Maxell uh, flap on it. So yeah, this has to be from uh, somewhere between E three and uh, E five. It's probably an E four pressing actually, just but just in a 1985 cover. Anyway. Nineteen thirty-eight film in nineteen sixty-five. This is from the MC Universal Home Video Bob Hope Collection. Nineteen ninety-five features. It's got number. It's got the number twenty-five right there. Yep, number twenty-five. Twenty-fourth week of night type five and boring barcode. So 
I'm pretty sure this one will have nothing at the end. All right. So. <sighs> I'm, getting, I'm getting sleepy, guys, so let's wrap this up. This is, this is an Italian film. Yep. See, it's in Italian with English subtitles. And this is a letter, and this and this movie is in a letterbox format, and the film is rated R. Nineteen. This is a 1969 film, and this is a 1988 VHS. Although you can tell by the uh, sticker label that this is a uh, a uh, nine a like earlier mid 90s uh, reprint. Since it doesn't have the original uh, silver uh, label that uh, MGM used on tapes in the like late eighties, yeah, this is a later reprint from October eleventh, nineteen ninety four. All right. Up until today, this was the the only uh, Mario Lanza movie that was missing from my uh, collection. So I now, so yeah, I now have every single uh, movie that uh, Mario Lanza uh, put put out, including the one that uh, Mario Lanza technically wasn't in, but he provided the uh, singing voice for, which was The Student Prince. <laughs> yep. 1952 film, and this is a 1992 VHS. This is an MGM tape co-produced by Turner Entertainment. And I forgot to say, uh... Fellini, Seti, Recon, however you say it, uh... Actually, I just real... I just realized this one isn't co-produced by United Artists or Turner Entertainment. Just says distributed by MGNUA Home Video. So yeah, this tape is not co-produced by any company. Okay. So I guess that one's not co-produced co -produced by anybody. It's just an MGM tape. But this is an MGM tape co-produced by Turner Entertainment. I'm guessing, uh... In the late 80s, uh, Turner and uh, United Artists didn't really co-produce uh, MGM tapes. It wasn't until the like 90s when they started uh, when uh, when they started uh, co-producing uh, MGM when MGM tapes started being co-produced by uh, Turner and uh, United Artists. So yeah. Yep. Oh, and I also forgot to mention. If you can see, yep, I think you guys can all guess what that means. Yep, this tape is also a Columbia House copy, which is cool, which is really cool. Later printing from July 10th, 1995. Alright, and the last VHS I got is a Turner Classic Movies release, and this one is still sealed. This is from the uh, TCM drama genre.
Special features are the original theatrical trailer and hosted by uh, the late Robert Osborne, Oscar historian and on-air host of Turner Classic Movies. Yep, the film's from 1942, and this tape is from 1996. Alright, let's get this out of the uh, shrink wrap. There we go. All right. So. Here's what the inside cover looks like. Very cool. Oh, and uh, no advertisement inside. Wow, and this is a this is a much later reprint. Print dates are January nineteenth and February eighth, two thousand two. So yeah, this is a much later reprint, which explains why this one didn't come with any inserts or anything. <laughs> There you go, guys. Alright. So that's part two of this update, and I hope you guys all enjoyed this uh, two-part update. See y'all in my uh, next uh, video whenever that whenever I get around to uh, doing it. So yeah, I'll see y'all later.